Bienvenidos a todos. Hoy vamos a hablar del libro My Complete Spanish Language Learning Journal. Me gustaría agradecer a todos por asistir. Hoy, Judah Vivas está con nosotros. Su tiempo es muy valioso, así que le pedí una cita para que nos acompañe. Yo sé que ella nos daría su tiempo gratis, pero no está bien usar algo por lo que no has pagado. Así que, gracias Jude por estar aquí. Jude es un tutora increíble de holajude.com. So today we're going to talk about my book, My Complete Spanish Language Journal. I wish to thank everyone for attending. Today, Judah Vivas is with us. And Jude is an amazing tutor at www.olajude.com. Dot com. Her time is valuable, so I made an appointment for us for her to join us. I know she'd give us her time for free, but it's not right to use something you've not paid for. So thank you, Jude, very, very much for being here. Nah, thank you. She's <laughs> an incredible tutor at olajude.com. I encourage everyone to get to know her. Antes de empezar, yo sé que puede ser temprano en la mañana o tarde en la noche donde estás. Yo sé que algunos de ustedes tuvieron que levantarse temprano para estar aquí. Yo sé que algunos de ustedes tuvieron que uh, levantarse temprano para estar aquí or quedarse despiertos hasta tarde para estar aquí. Pero este webinar tenía que ser programado para permitir que asistiera el mejor número de personas posible. Soy tu presentador, Dan Hall. So today, we're going to look at how to use my book from a tutor's perspective, from a tutor's perspective, which is going to give us a view that none of us have. We are all the students. Jude is the tutor. So we're going to look at it from a tutor's perspective. So I'm very grateful that you're here. But before we begin, please subscribe to this channel. Please subscribe to this channel. I need a hundred people to subscribe so that I can give this channel a name. Because right now it's something like youtube.com forward slash a bunch of letters, bunch of numbers, and that means nothing. But if I can get a hundred people to subscribe, I can name the channel. So that means a lot. And don't forget to like this video. That does a lot for the YouTube algorithm, moving the, <coughs> moving the video up. So don't forget to like this video. So muchas gracias a todos. I have a special treat for you. Um, I want to tell you everyone, I want to tell everyone how much I personally appreciate all of the pictures that have been coming in from the books that you've ordered. They're like medicine to my soul to see people getting the books and using them and finding help with them. And I also want to thank you for the reviews that you've placed on Amazon. And so the next three minutes are going to be my way of thanking you personally for that. So, empanzamos. 
do that this morning. Okay. Ouch. On your mat. No, on your bed. Go on your bed. Go on your bed. Stay there. Okay, so thank you very much. That's my way of saying thank you. And uh, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor throughout this uh, presentation, and that's mute your microphone. If you haven't already done that, I'm trying to control that on this end, but if you haven't already done that, we are going to have time for questions. And don't worry, because um, we not only have Jude for this hour, we actually have Jude for an additional hour. So if you need to stay on and talk to Jude, you want to ask her questions and linked afterwards, uh, we have her. So we all come from a lot of different places and a lot of different walks of life, but we all have one goal, and that is to become conversationally fluent in Spanish. For various ones, that might be different levels of conversationally fluent I mean, you might want to be able to give a speech somewhere or just to be able to order a nice dinner or just to be able to travel to a place and to be understood. Oh, that's what we're here for. And that is the goal of the book is to help you measure and track your progress as you move forward. So Jude, uh, thank you very much for being here. And um, I, I, I appreciate you letting us have the first part of your day. You're normally teaching at this time. So just consider us all your students. And um, Bill Rogers, I love that view. Wherever you're at, I'm in love with it. Uh, and it's good to see you, my friend. I can't hear you, but we're going to keep you muted. But I love your view. So Jude, do me a favor. Tell us how many different types of learners are there in general in education? Okay, let me see if I can, maybe I have, uh, give me a second here, un momento. This is the danger of doing live stream is, ah, uh, that's my fault. Everybody, it's my fault. I apologize, Jude. Um, Hola. Hola. <laughs> Hola, amiga. Hola, amigo. Hola a todos. So, how many types of learners are there? Cuatro. Four types. Four yes. Types of learners. Mm -hmm. We have visuals, oral, analytical, and kinesthetical or physical learners. Okay. Mm -hmm. Visual, oral, analytical, and physical. How do you say that last one, the one that's physical? How do you say that in Spanish? <laughs> kinesthetical. <laughs> New word, yeah, kinesthetical. And so um, I'm sure all of us in one way or another fit in some or several of these categories. Is that true? Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, anyone uh, needs to be in one of these categories. Even they can be a mix of type of learners. So, so let's see. Let's start with the visual learners. Describe, okay. to us, describe to us what a visual learner is. 
A visual learner is the one that process the information that they're receiving with charts, uh, graphics, tables, they need images, they need colors in order to get interested in what they are reading and to learn. They need to see the grammatical structures. When I explain things to these students, I have to open the whiteboard and make graphics in order that they can keep this info in their minds. Okay, it's very, very, very common. I remember one time one of our members was taking a week-long course. He's a detective, and he was taking a week-long course uh, with his police department on, you know, for Spanish. And um, they would not tell him how a word was spelled. They would just say the word. And he related to the group that he had a really difficult time because he likes to see the word spelled out beforehand. Is that, a, is that an example of what you're talking about? Yeah, sure. I mean, they need to see everything in order to understand it. I'm, I'm very visual myself. <laughs> I need to see something. If, if, some, if some class, uh, people just, is just talking and talking and talking, and I don't have any sort of a graphic where I can see what they're saying, I'm not going to understand it. It's muy común. Uh, so there's four different types, and this visual is yeah. the first one. Uh, which of the four types, by the way, is the most common? I think visual is the most common one. Is yeah. the most common one. Okay, so let's talk about oral learners. So could you describe to us uh, something about oral learners? Yeah, sure. Like you said uh, about your friend, <laughs> they were doing a learning method for oral students. The orals process the information through listening. They don't need to see it. They just listen to the class or the podcast and they don't even take notes. They love discussions. This is people that are not afraid to speak. They might have some mistakes, it's okay, but they are not that afraid. They love this exchange with words with conversation, basically. They prefer lectures, discussion, than reading exercises. Okay. And there's they there's love really to systems. repeat. There's some really great systems out there uh, with oral. Um, they, um, you know, I, I can think of several. Um, one of the ways that I started out learning Spanish was with the Pimsleur method which mm -hmm. is completely oral. Um, and is, a, is oral another, I mean, can we also call those maybe audible or auditory type See, listening? Sure, okay. auditory learners, yeah. Okay, all right, mm -hmm. so talk to us about analytical learners and um, give us some real math here, sound real scientific about this. So give me a, <laughs> just describe analytical learners for us. Okay. I know that it sounds very scientific, <laughs> analytical, but these are a type of student that process their, I mean, they process the info. Let me explain you how. They see the class, it could be with visual or audio too, it doesn't matter. The thing is, they don't write what the teacher said. They process the info with their own uh, writings or their they structure everything that they see. If if an analytic uh, student is watching this, he is going to make his own chart in their book, and they need to structure it in order to memorize what they are understanding. It's going to be completely different to what the teacher is saying. They are very organized and they love grammar. So they're gonna get in deep with the grammar and yeah, structure it <laughs> for themselves. Okay, are we very have, we have organized. Some, we, we have some very um, uh, we have some folks in our group that are uh, grammar lovers and uh, and and that's great. Uh, I'm I envy them. But let me ask you a question. Uh, in some memorization systems. 
they'll say, you know, try to associate this word to a tree or some object. Is that a form of an analytical learner? Hola. Okay, stand by for a second. Let's see somehow or another she Jude got muted again. Just sent me a message. Lo siento, mi amiga. The dangers of uh, live broadcasting here. It was my fault. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Yes. It was my fault. I wanted to cough. <laughs> Can you please put okay. that in writing for me? Uh, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I've known Judah for several years. This is the first time in her life she's ever told me something's her fault. All right. Um, but going, at, going okay. back to the analytical learner for a moment, um, okay. you know, with some memorization systems, they'll say, you know, associate this word to an object or room in your house. And is that a form of uh, analytical learner? No, actually, they are way, way they're physical. <laughs> okay, so let's go on and talk about physical then, because that's, uh, that's the one that's really got me curious. So describe okay. the physical learners, the kinesthetic. Okay, the, the kinesthetic or kinesthetics or physical learners, okay. they learn through experience, okay? They process the info completely different. They need to recreate or associate, like you said, with something they have in order to remember. So they like doing activities in classes. We, as teachers, we, should, we do role plays or games in order that they get the info. These people can also learn a lot from immersion trips because they are involved with so many activities that they are going to do and learn at the same time. They take tons of notes, okay? And like you said, they like to point things. If they are learning the parts of the body, they are going to use their parts of the body to remember them or okay. the rooms or the, yeah, the, the context, they put in context the real things to the words they are learning. So we've had some users send in pictures of them using their book. I'd like you okay. to take a look at this picture. Okay, so yeah. here's someone that's using the book and uh, I, I have permission to, to use this photo, by the way. And uh, the, user, the user said, oh, but my handwriting is horrible. And I said, all of our handwriting is horrible when it's just for <laughs> us. Okay. Sure. But take a look at this picture and, and share with me, just based on this picture alone, what does it tell you about this type of learner? This, uh, because of so many notes, can be a physical but also it's visual they okay. she or he needs the colors in order to uh, i like to say to put it prettier <laughs> but actually it's to uh, get more interested in it and to to yeah it's Amazing. how they are <laughs> the way the book the way the book is organized the satisfaction levels are on the right side of the book and over a period of time, they're going to be able to use this like a flip book. And those of us that are old enough to remember a flip book, you know, when you flip the pages of the book, a little cartoon character would dance around. Well, <laughs> the way this user has done it with the highlighting of the satisfaction faces, I call those faces of pain, uh, the, the, the little faces there, that user is going to be able to see very quickly um how their satisfaction modulated over time yeah yeah so, it's great <laughs> so this, this person could be a physical and a visual a yeah visual learner okay all right so we have visual oral or auditory analytical and uh physical and yes. we're all aiming toward uh, spanish fluency but unlike this graphic on the screen right now, we're not completely separated. 
Um, no. We are in a perfect world, what I call a Walgreens world. Uh, <laughs> we blend together and sure. we have these overlapping areas in our life where part of it, the visual part overlaps with the physical, overlaps with the oral, overlaps with the analytical. And uh, I, I've entitled this all styles in balance, but that doesn't necessarily mean in balance, like Zen balance, like it's a good balance. It just means that they're all equal. Uh, so, is this kind of a rare type though? No. To have somebody- it's not, I mean, uh, all the levels? Yes, yes, I have several uh, students that have maybe all the styles. It depends on the activity they are doing. But okay. this can be a student that in their method, it's very visual and oral at the same time, where they can read and listening to something. But at the same time, they take notes and put in context what they're learning. And at the same time, <laughs> they are very organized. Mm. It can happen. Obviously, you can be more visual and analytic or more auditory and physical. It wow. all depends on your personality, basically, and how you learn. But so it will be mine, great. <laughs> mine, is more, mine is more like this, okay? Okay. That's how I kind of consider myself, you know, um, you know, uh, my not to analytical. It's where my it's where the physical and the analytical never touch together in in, <laughs> my, in my experience. Okay. Uh, and for this is now this is me. I'm just talking about me. Um, I feel like my analytical and my oral and my visual work together really good. Okay. Okay. But I'm rarely interested in the the games part of it. Okay. I know. Yeah, you know that. I'm very. I'm, very, <laughs> I'm just not interested in that. Uh, you know, but I am interested in combining the visual and the oracle, the oral, the audible. Uh, and the analytical. Yes. So you're very analytic. What does that What does that do for you as a teacher? Uh, how do you um, have to adjust in order to teach somebody that you know where their styles don't completely blend together nicely? For sure. I mean, when I have my first class with the students, I well, you know this, I always ask so many questions. It's not just to learn about the person, it's more about seeing where this person might be in this type of learning. And for example, if a person is too physical, I make tons of games. If a person is more visual, like I said earlier, I need to use a lot the whiteboard in order that they see it. Uh, obviously, repeating what I say help with the oral. And with them, I help with the organize for the analytical. So uh, as a teacher or as a tutor, we need to teach in all the styles. I mean, we need to make activities for all of them because you don't know. <laughs> I mean, you, we know as a teacher is the type of students, but the students doesn't know their type. And like you said, you're more visual and oral and physical than analytical. You're not just one type. So I, uh, sorry, you are more analytical, oral and visual, <laughs> not physical. So the, your classes are gonna be different from another student that has other style. Okay, so let me ask you this. As, and and some, some people, they can have you know, a great large oral and visual capability, a small yeah. analytical ability and a small physical ability. Is that true? Yeah, sure. Okay. It is true. Yeah. So this is just a way for us uh, friends to, again, and this is the thing that I try to um, impress upon you about using my book is to be honest with yourself yes. and use these four types of learnings to make a note maybe somewhere in the back about what type of user you are, what type of learner I mean you are. Are you the analytical or the visual or the oral or the physical? And 
if you're confused at all about this, you can Google the four types of learning, read a lot about it, and do a self-assessment about where you're at. Because the question I have for Jude right now is, can students change or modify or adapt their styles? For example, with me, you know, maybe sure. I'm able to become more uh, physical where I like, I like doing the games and so forth. But so can they change or modify or adapt their styles? It's not just like to change it completely, because like I said, it's like, it's like a part of your personality, basically. But you can do some uh, things that can add more skills to your style, okay? For example, I know that you don't like games, but you like to take notes a lot. Yes. So you can put more in context what you are writing. Like in order to memorize some other words, you can point them or try to make a gesture in order that your mind keeps it. So you will not be changed completely, but you are going to add like another method for your learning. Also, I, I believe this is just about discipline and habits. If if you are not the if you're an oral type that you prefer to listen to everything and don't take notes, taking notes might actually help you. <laughs> and it's going to be better because you're going to remember more, you're going to have a better learning experience and maybe even learn faster. So it's all about uh, combining these things maybe don't change yourself completely but adding some things that the visual the oral the analytic or the, the kinesthetic has in order that I improve my own style does that make sense <laughs> that makes great sense to me and I want to give a plug right now for Ruth Catherine uh, Darby of the channel uh, Spanglish Fantastico uh, she's got about a, I think it's an eight to 10 minute video on the benefits of taking notes. And um, I'd encourage you to take a look at, at that video. There's a lot of great resources out there and you can become overwhelmed, I think, with resources, but Spanglish Fantastico and Ruth is in the UK um, and she has a video there on notes that I think are appropriate for um, what we're talking about here. So, um, so that's, that gives us all hope that- <laughs> Yeah, sure. If, if the tutor says, or we assess on our own, that we need to become more visual or we need to become more oral, we need to speak more, um, you know, and practice speaking more with proper discipline and and self-honesty, we mm -hmm. can actually adapt that learning style. It's not something we're stuck with. Uh, it's not something that uh, that somehow or another, um, uh, in a, you know, in, we're, we're unable to grow in that area. No, no, we can't so grow in that area. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at, uh, at at this question here, because this is a burning question on a lot of people's minds. Um, how much time should a student study per day? And before you answer, I want to tell you that back in 2011, I had the honor to go to the Defense Language Institute in Monterey, California. And there I saw um, military students and some civilian students who were studying languages for 10, 12 hours a day. Oh God! And they were there. They were there a minimum of about twelve months, and some of them were there for as long as three and a half years. And uh, if they were really good at learning a language, they wouldn't let them leave. They'd ask them to learn another language. Um, now I don't have ten to twelve hours a day to donate to. Uh, no. Um, no, that's that's like a very 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 hard. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> like intensive method, but 
to be honest, I'm against uh, to spend more than two hours studying because your brain starts to collapse. And I have several students that after my hour of tutoring that I make them talk or we study something, they say, oh, my brain hurts. <laughs> so it's just better to, for me, in my opinion, it's better to study one hour from half an hour to one hour per day, but like hard study, okay? It's not uh, that I watch a Netflix movie, no, no, no. I mean, studying their, the, the learning method you're doing and grammar or in a specific subject, very concentrating that uh, just from half an hour to an hour per day. The thing with the Spanish or any language basically is that you have to give it time every day. So every day. if, yes, every day you need to study or you need to do something to keep that learning process, okay? So it could be, like I said, just half an hour if you don't want to study that much that day <laughs> or one hour, uh, like good, very concentrated with all the resources uh, will be great. Okay. So one of the questions that came in on YouTube was what learning style is most appropriate for someone who has maybe a short-term memory. And there's a lot of people like that, especially adults who uh, um, may have had um, either some sort of traumatic brain injury or, uh, you know, maybe a stroke or okay. they find themselves not being able to remember as well as they used to. So what type of learning method would you say that um, is more appropriate for them? I mean, the learning method could be anything. I mean, it could be, uh, m there are tons. The things with a person that, that is not remembering that well is that they need to take notes. They need to put in context what they are learning. So they need something like the journal, for example, because they will remember the vocabulary they learned the last week and the vocabulary of that day in order to remember it. It doesn't matter the method. The method are too many that are very good, but they need to, you know, write it down and practice it and practice it in order that they stick in their minds. Okay. Otherwise, I agree with that. It's not going to work. <laughs> I definitely agree with that because I, I have to write it down to remember. I, I mean, I have notes everywhere anyway. So uh, <laughs> let's let's take a look at this page here. This is a user sent us in a picture of their. Um, <laughs> Jude wasn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a picture of their 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 journal, and what they've yes. done in the bottom where we log our study time, is a technique that I recommended if you if you are going to study more than two hours a day mm -hmm. uh, to divide the time blocks diagonally and make each diag diagonal cut is five minutes. You can keep track of this, you know, every five minutes, you can keep track. Well, I've been doing this for 15 minutes, three little check marks because, and the reason I think this is important is because at the end of the day, you don't want to go, I'm not sure how long I studied today. Um, and when you add it up and you actually do the math, this person studied for a total of three hours and 10 minutes. But I'm going to ask you a question, Jude. Are there different levels of studying? When you say two hours of study a day, I've got Netflix videos that I like to watch that are longer than two hours in Spanish. Uh, so what kind of uh, study are, are, are exactly are you talking about? I'm talking about uh, your learning method, okay? Or the classes with your tutor. Uh, that will be the hard study or the main study, okay? When you study or when you learn the grammatical structures, when you understand why we have four ways to say was <laughs> or things like that, okay? Like grammar, studies 
basically. So that's what you mean by hard study is actually yes. the language system that we're using. Um, there's a number of them out there. Uh, many yes. of us here are using Spanish with Paul. Spanish there's with Paul, exactly. Tremendous ones that are out there. But, uh, but by hard study, you mean actually sitting down with that method and yes time. and and you say that you believe no more than two hours with that no 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 more than that okay uh, it could also be for example there's people that they need more than their learning method okay and with a hard subject like sir and stuff it's very basic but very confusing so they can look for uh, for in YouTube for any other video that explain this, but they're going they're studying grammar. They have to make notes about it. So that it's a hard study time. It is completely concentrate in this. So you mentioned that those are the, the two hours. If they like all their things uh, into a more passive way to study it could be any time you want <laughs> basically okay see like you can hear to podcast while you're doing another activity you can uh, watch a video that you just like you can watch a movie like you said in netflix you can uh, listen to music the whole day or when you are cooking or cleaning those are passive settings uh, for example, a homework, I like to send a lot of homeworks, depending if it's too hard for you and you need to concentrate, that will be hard. But if it's an easy, very light homework, it will be in the passive. Okay. So like, for example, um, if you're trying to, uh, and, and you guys are going to laugh at this, I'm trying to uh, read a book to my granddaughter uh, that's entitled Un Pes Dos Peses. All <laughs> Pes Azul. Okay. And I don't want to read it to her without the rhyming sound that comes with yeah. it. And, uh, and so for me, I just occasionally I'll pick up the book and, and read it um, and, you know, just to practice. And I, I consider that a form of passive studying. Do you? Yeah, it is. It is because you're not. I mean, you're reading, yes, but you're not taking notes of the words you don't know <laughs> about one fish, two fish. <laughs> um, it, it is just a funny or a fun way to practice a little bit of Spanish. Okay. It's something so you, you enjoy. You've mentioned the, the book several times and you've seen the book. Um, See? Let me ask you... Um, what are the breaking points of a language student? Hmm. What are the ones that, that just, you know, where the student just quits? And we've seen that. Um, you know, we have some very good friends in our group that just all of a sudden you don't see them anymore. And, um, and maybe about four or five months later, then you see them and they say, I just lost motivation. Yeah. It's, it's very common uh, and most <laughs> in Spanish learning because if we compare Spanish to English and um, sometimes we have the same structure but sometimes we have four meanings for a word or four words that means the same thing and it's very complex sometimes okay it's, I always say that Spanish is way more difficult than English. It's not impossible, but grammatically it's difficult. Okay. So there are three breaking points right. for students. Okay. All right. Uh, the first one, it's way in the beginning, basically, when they start to see the irregular verbs, when they see all the articles that we have genders for the words. That could be the first one. Not many students quick at this point, okay? But there are ones that they do. The, the bad part about this is that when they come back, they have forgot a lot. 
uh, of what they learned. So they have to start again. Mm. But yes, that will be the first one, like all about ser and estar, for and para. Uh, it's a new thing. Okay. Mm. The second breaking point is in an intermediate level with past tense. Past tense is the first uh, point. I mean, if you overcome the beginning part, the past tense knocks a lot of people out <laughs> because uh, it's weird. We have two past tense. We have four ways to say was. Uh, it's, it's just weird, okay? And people in an intermediate level want us to speak already and have conversations and, and get fluency. And they feel that they get stuck in this subject and they can move forward. And even if they study and study and study, they see that they are not improving and that they keep making mistakes between estaba and estuve or fue and era, okay? So that's a breaking, a very, very strong breaking point. And the last one is in an advanced level when you are look, studying the subjunctive, the imperative, passive voice, it, it gets harder. <laughs> So to overcome all of this, you need to have a strong reason to learn Spanish. Okay. Yes, that, that's very, very, very important. The reasons can change in the way, okay? It's not like, for example, in here it says travel, hobby, because it's good for their memory. It's one of the most common reasons. But it needs to be strong. It needs to be something you really like. And you need to know that you're not going to die <laughs> because you didn't learn. Okay? It's not something that, that it's, I don't know, vital. <laughs> no. Okay? You need to get these good reasons in order that you stay motivated. That's what I like about the book is that you have the satisfaction levels and it's very friendly and it, it, it is a way to the students track their learning and also track their motivation and keep that motivation going on. It's very important. So, so this, this comes from one of our users who laid out, uh, I call it the El Porque, the big reason why Same. they're doing what they're doing. You know, why do they want to become fluent in Spanish? What resources do they need? Being very honest about themselves. What are things that interfere with their goals? Uh, everybody has those things in their life. And then to truly identify who are people who can help me achieve my goals. Uh, yeah. And uh, I recommend that <laughs> this person's much braver than me. I recommend you write this out in pencil, okay? Uh, <laughs> oh yeah you know, the people who can help me achieve my fluency that may change um but um sure but the so when when things get tough you can remember hey i wanted to do this for for this case for example was to uh improve my general knowledge my memory my brain potential i need yeah. to do that and things that interfere with my goals is, you know, working too much, being easily distracted, you know, being, uh, you know, easily distracted by the newest series that's on Netflix and I don't have it in Spanish. So the, the motivation, you mentioned the motivation. And uh, the, other, the other thing I wanted to, uh, we'll talk about in a moment is, is the motivation measurement per day. But the question, I think you've already hit upon this, is how the book can help the student, but how can it help you and the student as a team? So yeah, sure. you know, that's what I'd like to know is, is if you could share with us, how does the book help the tutor-student relationship? It helps a lot. <laughs> but um, I mean, there are many students that have grammar questions or questions in general, but they are afraid to ask or sometimes they don't even know they don't know that. 
So with the book, when when they are writing uh, questions I have, okay, they come to the class with a specific questions. Also, we can track what they have studied lately. And me as a tutor, it guides me or it helps me to, uh, yeah, <laughs> it helps me to see what activity I should do in order that that person practice what they have learned, okay? Like you could, like you said, the tutor and the student and the relationship must be like a teamwork. And I also always say that to my students. Uh, we need communication, okay? I don't need to see all the reasons and I don't need to see all of this because in the book, you need to be true to yourself. I mean, you have to write from your heart everything if you are not feeling satisfied if you have a mood so it doesn't matter that i see that part but all the question part is very important to me uh, i need to see or i like to see the vocabulary they have learned in the week or in the day in order that i can uh, think about conversations where they can use that vocabulary Okay, okay, so let's, let's hold that for a second because I'm going to show that in a moment. But you mentioned the learning mood, and that's really important. And we have to be honest with ourselves. If we're having a really bad day, I mean, okay. you know, th the other day we had a very bad storm here. I lost some uh, part of my roof, and it leaked in my house, and this happened at 3 o'clock in the morning. I didn't feel like studying Spanish by 8 o'clock in the morning. I promise you that. Uh, although I did practice some of my brand new Spanish slang words that I've heard uh, from some locals, okay? Um, okay, when I saw it dripping into my house. But a learning mood is important. And again, to be honest with yourself about how, how you're starting your day off. Is, do you agree with that? Uh, yes. I mean, they need to be, no one is going to see this book, okay? <laughs> so it's not necessary to have a happy face every day. Maybe... Someday you're tired, someday you are, you have a good mood, or someday you're just mad, like, what, like what happened to you? I mean, <laughs> it was a bad day already. Yeah. So you don't need to be happy all the time. No one is going to see this. I'm not going to see it. It's yeah, just I like that. I yourself. Think. I mean, you and yourself. Right. I'm not posting this on a blog. And this is my, my personal learning journal. And exactly. so it's really not going to work for me if I'm, if I'm trying to make, if I'm not being honest with myself is the best way I can put it. Yeah, no, it's not going to work. Exactly. And, and also the, the mood or the satisfaction levels, if you are in a bad day and you see in your days that it keeps being bad and bad and or you're not satisfied with that it's like a like a call you know like saying what i'm doing that is not uh, achieving my satisfaction i mean that that i can get better so yeah, we can really, think really about what's what's going on why i'm feeling like that and what i have to or what i need to do in order to improve that satisfaction. Right. So to be honest with yourself, look at your day. And, you know, if, if you're consistently not satisfied with your performance, something needs to change. And, and, exactly. and you have to be honest with yourself about that. I appreciate, uh, appreciate that completely. Um, and, uh, and I'm glad, I'm glad that you, uh, that you said that specifically. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's move on to this. Uh, give me a second here. Let me give you the internet. Uh, let's move on to this next section. How does a tracking How does the tracking language learning process help a student? I think we've talked about this already, um, and mm -hmm. and it helps them. And we just finished saying it, it helps them to see maybe where they're not their process isn't right or it's motivating to them. So I think we've covered a lot of that. I, I wanted to, um, this, this uh, graphic here was provided to me uh, by, mm -hmm. by someone. 
And if you were just to kind of browse through their page, you'll notice that they, they split their vocabulary list from three to six. And on this yes. day, they're learning five, uh, bringing five vocabulary uh, items over from yesterday. They just started using the journal, so they don't have anything from five days ago or from 10 days ago, but they do have sure. one goal that they're bringing forward. And, and you'll see they have six vocabulary words for today and three <laughs> new goals for today. Yes. And, um, and have given themselves a, a very consistent, you know, learning experience uh, um, description here about being a little bit more confident, more comfortable talking with Jude. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, we were talking about the, the student relationship. Um, what this I would see as a help is uh, to be able to explain to you as my tutor exactly where I'm struggling at or where my victory yes. No, here's four sentences that they created. They, they also bring the sentences to the class. That's very common. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to know if they are right. <laughs> so if there is a mistake, we talk about it in the class. Yeah, when you look um, at these activities that they describe here, and you know they're given some good definition to the, to the activities, and then they're mm -hmm. very, very honest with their level of satisfaction with each one, you know, giving on vocabulary, uh, giving themselves a, a low level of satisfaction on vocabulary. And, yeah. and that kind of helps them to fine tune their processes up mm -hmm. if they need to, or again, change their process. And this based yeah. on what you've been telling us uh, so far. See, I mean, it, it helps you a lot. I believe that even if you're an oral type of student or any other type of student, it, you need to, it's very, very helpful to track what you're doing. Okay, so in what, order are, to, what oh. are the key journaling areas for you when you know one of your students has the journal and you've started your session? What are the okay. things that are important for you? What do you want to know like right away about about what since we've last had a session or a class together, what is it? What are the areas that are important for you to want to know? As a tutor, I always ask if they have questions. Okay. Yes, uh, the the question part is very very important for the tutor. Okay. Then, uh, what they have been studying lately. Okay. okay? All right. Uh, and all the what they have done basically <laughs> see i so they can tell me if they have read something it, there are many people that are better at reading than i'm speaking for example okay. all right so yeah. we can they can i know that but they can tell me oh i read this or i i found this or i watched this video and they say this so this uh, chart or this uh, part of the descriptions of the activity helps me a lot to see what they have done in the week before my class. Now you mentioned that vocabulary is very, very important. Oh, see. And yeah, the, it is. the journal every day asks four things about vocabulary. And mm -hmm. as you can see, several people are actually splitting this section up and creating have six or more. Um, yeah. areas so we have vocabulary for today and and three and uh, you know I actually based that on a recommendation that you gave us a long time ago and that <laughs> yeah. we learn three new words a day and then vocabulary from yesterday from five days ago and from ten days ago um, why is it important to have the yesterday five days ago and ten days ago on there it's remembering it, many students come to me and tell me I'm doing a vocabulary course, but I keep forgetting the words and I keep forgetting and I know I learned, I have seen that word, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> and it's because we need to repeat, we need to write it down, we need to put in context. That's why it's so important that you make sentences with those words, not the sentences that the course have, sentences that will 
match your lifestyle. Things that you actually will say in real life using that word. Okay. So if you repeat that and, and write it down and repeat it, it's going to be harder to forget, basically. Okay. So it, it's very good to have this because it, it keeps you remembering what you have learned. And at the end of the week, you can even think about the, the words you learned without looking back and grab it down and say, oh, okay, I, I remember more than I thought. Because in the weekend review, all of your words should be listed. See. Okay. So, so we're tracking uh, to reach our goal of Spanish fluency. We're tracking, um, you know, you know the, the, the reading portion, okay? Uh, what are we reading? And that could be passive learning or it can be hard learning, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. And we're also tracking, you know, studying. And yes. this studying is typically the hard study that you mentioned. Yes. How, mm -hmm. much, how much hard study am I putting in? Okay. And then we just mentioned vocabulary, and you recommend at least three new words per day. And yes. By and repeat, repeat them over a period of time. That's that spaced yes. repetition system. Okay. Um, and then speaking. Uh, yes. Now, we have some hard study speaking going on, but yes. can't speaking also be passive, right? Yes, sure. I mean, speaking is just not um, talking to a tutor, okay? I like that it says alone. It's yeah. very important that you talk to yourself in order to make your brain think more in Spanish. I always advise to my students, that they have to think in Spanish. And all of them look at me like I'm crazy. But <laughs> it's true. I mean, you need to what speak you to yourself. yourself though? What if you're answering yourself? Or yeah. yourself? Okay. Exactly. Or or you're mad about something and you're just thinking in Spanish. Ah, oh, <laughs> why did this happen to me? ¿Por qué me pasa esto? See, <laughs> that's up to speaking. Also, if you read out loud, for example, uh, it will help too with pronunciation and hearing or listening to yourself. And it's a form of speaking too, correct? Yes, it's a form of speaking too, same as singing. It yeah. combines listening and speaking at the same time. It's very, very good. Which brings us to our next thing, which is listening. You know, yes. And, and part of that is the hard study. See? But a lot of it is passive, at least in my life. There's a yes. lot more passive listening than there is hard listening. Someone wrote on YouTube a while ago that uh, they like to keep their radio in their car tuned to the local Spanish station. And it just kind of keeps their ear accustomed to having yeah. the sound of the words. Yes, it, that, that's true. Uh, the passive listening, it's very good. <laughs> They, I always said to my student, like, okay, if you like a song, a Spanish song, listening to it and try to catch at least two words that they say. And if you can catch more words, it's amazing because you are uh, have more understanding of what they're saying. But it's very good to listen to radio, podcast, uh, native Spanish, sing, uh, songs, sorry, um, anything, basically. Okay. that you enjoy and that you can listen. And then finally, writing. you mentioned writing new sentences that are yes, outside, every outside day. of the hard study. You know, obviously yes. we have translations from the hard study, hard lessons, you know, where we're given a, a paragraph in English and asked to write it out in Spanish. But you're also saying just as in your real life, something comes to you, write that down. Yeah. And, and where do you put the practicing the conjugation charts? Is that like a combination of passive and hard? Yes. I mean, it depends on your mood <laughs> and it depends on how hard you're studying them. But yes, if you are make sentences with their words and conjugating charts, yeah, it, it, I mean, if it's, if you struggle with it, it's going to be a hard study. <laughs> But if, if it's something just, oh, I want to write this down or, or highlight it, it will be passive. That's, this is what I like about the book. 
uh, it has, it seems to people that it's just going to be helping for reading and writing, but actual, or vocabulary, but actually it has all of them if you know how to use it. Same for the old type of students. For example, a, a visual, the journal, it's going to help a lot because it's very visual itself. And it has all these charts and conjugation uh, things that are very, very useful that you can read and even write and even read them out loud if you're oral in order to um, comprehend better what you're reading. You can read it out loud if you're oral. Also, it gave it give you it give you a, a structure every day for the journal. It's not something you must do, but it like it. it I always said that it helps you to guide yourself in all this learning process. So that's very going to be very very good for the analytical part, okay? Because it has a structure, but also it works for the physical because. It, the journal even has a part that says what to say section and that what to say sections are words that these type of students can work in order to start a conversation or in a situation so they can recreate the situation using these words so it helps besides the students the type of students it also has activities or things for all of the areas about reading, speaking, listening, uh, studies, and vocabulary and writing. It has all in one. It's all about how you use it and how you enjoy it. <laughs> it doesn't, the book doesn't teach you Spanish because it's not a method. It's not a Spanish method, but it helps you to track your study and to guide yourself and to improve. You're going to improve because you are, you are going to remember more. You're going to have a question for your tutor. You are going to uh, improve your motivation levels too because you're gonna think, hey, why speaking? Uh, I have so low satisfaction level with speaking. Okay, it, it can, give you a new goal for your next day and and for the next day and for the next day. <laughs> so when you see, in, if, if you start with a journal and then you finish the journal, you're going to see a progress when you start and when you end. It's going to be there because you're going to track everything down. It's very useful. Thank you. Um, so, how about let's go to some final thoughts and then let's open it up for questions from everyone who's who's with us. Um, and uh, one of the things I want to say to you, Jude, is is muchas gracias por su tiempo. Thank you. So much. Uh, and uh, I feel better that you know this is the largest group class you've ever had. Okay, um, and so. Uh, we hope that you and your family are safe. I know you're staying at home and yes. we want you to keep being safe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unmute everyone and everybody, if, if you don't want us to hear what you're saying, please mute your microphone. But I want you to be able to ask a question. And uh, if you have a question for Jude, this is our time to get it, okay? So I'm going to speak to you about that. It's very interesting. It's very good to go for a, for a walk and I have to, to wear the, the mask and there's no protocol at all. So I don't know if they have to, to play with the mask, but uh, I can tell you this is also uncomfortable. But really? again, I don't think that uh, it's a, a question for nice idea because uh, again, it's not that. Wendy? Go ahead, Wendy. Let me see if I can see where you're at. Okay. No, it, it's okay. No. All right. So who has a question for Jude? Anybody? On YouTube? Uh, let's see. 
uh, Eddie, uh, our abogado, said oh, um, that he thinks that the key is doing a little of each of the learning areas, reading, listening, et cetera, because they all work together. Yes. And, and I think he's, I think he's nailed it for me. Um, uh, I like what Ruth wrote with Spanglish Fantastico that uh, the best way that this is really the best that what Jude's describing, she agrees with. Um, she believes that the best way to study is poco a poco. Sí. You know, constantly building on what you've previously learned rather than trying to jump ahead. And that's one of the reasons I put the fluency test in there is so that you can see what you need to achieve to get to the next level to ultimately get to the final level of where you want to be. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. So the one of the things is under the special words for today, there's acronyms. Uh, please explain. Well, uh, the I want you, whoever wrote that, because I don't know who, what your call sign is on YouTube. Um, okay, so PP is past participle. Yes. It's past participle. And G is the gerund form. Okay. Herondio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the herondio. So um, it's past participle, partic past participle and gerund form are very important when you're learning a new word to look at the past participle and the gerund form as well, because there may be a spelling change that requires a slight way of, of pronouncing it differently than you expected. But that's what those acronyms are. And if you can think of any of the other acronyms, let me know. In the uh, cognate portion, the, the letters that you see in parentheses are like what cognate goes to what. A Spanish cognate. So like IC equals ICO is you take a word like panic, which ends with IC, and the cognate for it would be panico, which is ICO. Um, so, okay, you're welcome, Kate. Um, I didn't know uh, what your call sign was there. And, and uh, Ruth, thank you so much. You're very, very kind. You're probably one of the kindest people I've met outside our group and I'm glad you're a part of our group now. Um, so thank you, thank you very much for that. Let's see, does um, anybody have a question in the group uh, that is on Zoom? If you do, there's a yes button. If you'll just click it, um, I'll, um, I'll be able to see you and, and go right to you. So if, if somebody has a question in the group, that'd be fine. Uh, and if not, you can always email me. My email address is dailylanguagejournal at gmail.com. That address is in the book. It's on the first page of the book. Uh, dailylanguagejournal at gmail.com. And you can email me. And, um, and they I can also email me if okay. they have a grammar question. Great. And uh, do their vivas arroba gmail.com. <laughs> okay. And so for those of us who haven't mastered um, email words in Spanish, that's judervivas at yeah. gmail.com. Arroba is the at. Uh, we have a question here. Let me get to the question. Thank you. Uh, let's see. In the chat. Um, no, it's probably insane. Pauline, thank you so much. Uh, that's a uh, great encouragement. She says she feels very motivated to get started with her journal now. And, uh, You're going to love it, Pauline. <laughs> so uh, now we all call Jude Jude, but her full name is Juder with a D-E-R. So that's Vivas at gmail.com. Or in Messenger or in all legit <laughs> okay um so i've got three bears on youtube it says uh, into the question for webinar question for jude what can she say to ease the fears of us beginners in participating on a one 
to one with her. Now, before you answer that, Jude, let me say this. Uh, if anybody wants to stay on to listen to the answers and the questions or to ask their own questions, please feel free to do so. This is gonna stay open for a little while if, um, or, or, or for a while. Uh, if you need to go, that's completely understood. Uh, the questions part will not be on the final video, uh, but um, you can always get it within the group. So Jude, what would you say to Three Bears about what, um, how would you ease the fears of beginners uh, when they're participating one-to-one? -one? Because obviously you've got, you know, th there's, it, it, it's kind of intimidating for a new person to start with a tutor and yeah. what would you say to ease those fears? It's okay. <laughs> I, I honestly think that any person should start, it doesn't matter the level, if they want a tutor, they can start anytime. I speak English, okay, so I'm not going to speak completely in Spanish and and make them talk and force them and frustrate them. That's the last thing I want to do. In my first class with a student, any student, any level, I ask them why they want to learn Spanish, their goals, what they're struggling with, what they want to improve, because that's important to me to see their level and what can I do to help them. So, if they want to learn something or to yeah learn a subject or to understand certain stuff i'm going to try to do it in another way like explain it differently to make games to uh, have a very very basic conversation so it doesn't matter the level I'm very <laughs> friendly. <laughs> no one should fear about me or my classes. Uh, and just start. It's it's going to be good. I promise. <laughs> so Susan Marsh asked a question on YouTube. At what stage uh, you progress the lessons with Jude? She's using the Spanish with Paul system. And she'd like yeah. to know at what stage should she progress to lessons with Jude? Now, what I would like to say about that is, uh, Jude, as, I, as far as I know, is the only tutor that Paul has endorsed. Um, now, he may have others that he's, he's recommended to people, but um, uh, you know, Jude has complete access to Paul's uh, classes and um, can even email him herself if she needs to. But uh, if you say that you're on 1.1, she knows exactly what that is. Yeah. Um, and at what point would you answer that question for her? Would you say, hey, it's time for us to get together and, and, and let me tutor you in the Spanish with Paul system? I will say since the beginning, uh, the, this happened a lot. There are many students that end the Spanish with Paul course uh, or method and suddenly they can speak. And they are at level, I mean, they even have done it twice and they keep not speaking. There's other type of a student that they can make very, very good sentences by writing down but they can uh, speak because they are afraid or they cannot understand native speakers because their ears are not used to the language. So they can understand the word if they see it, but when someone say it, they, they tell me that they, a phrase for them, is just like one long word. So it's very, it's very, very, very good to start, not even, I mean, it's, it's not even with me that you need to start. It's about doing everything, like the listening and trying to speak since you were a beginner. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very, very easy later when you have more vocabulary and when you are uh, more comfortable with yourself 
and that you have more knowledge, you're going to be able to speak better. But if you wait until you finish the course to start, it's going to be rough. <laughs> it's going to be harder. That's uh, uh... I think that's a good point. Uh, I'm going to ask a question that came up in the group uh, okay. earlier this week, and that simply was, uh, when should someone who is starting to learn Spanish be starting to speak Spanish? Since the beginning. <laughs> when I'm when I... Believer, I'm a firm believer you're not going to be able to have a conversation. I'm not sure. But, but, but... You really need to start talking to someone um, yeah. day one for example when I learned English it, that method was a, mainly for speaking and it was very weird because in the first class they told me you're going to have a private class and then you're going to have a time for doing grammar exercise and the last time or the last half an hour of the class it's going to be a conversation with another teacher i was so afraid and i the whole day <laughs> they were four hours but all the day i was thinking what i'm supposed to talk if this is my first class and i remember that the first lesson was to say what is this and what is that? So basically the teacher was pointing at things and telling me, what is this? What is that? And I just say, this is a table, that it's a window. So since the first lesson they made me speak, it was very basic, very, very, very basic things. But I believe that that helps also in Spanish. Because later, I, I was afraid to speak. Yes, I mean, that's a thing that you overcome with time and after you have talked to many people. But it, it was easier for me to speak because I could, you know, pull it out of my mouth, basically. <laughs> because since the first class, they were pushing me to do it. So it's very important that you try uh, like saying it out loud, that you try to make these conversations in your head, like, oh, what I will, I will say in this type of situation in order that, that you can improve. It's very, very important. Yeah, that's great. Um, I, I appreciate you saying that. I wanted to thank, uh, during the course of today's lesson, we've had um, more subscribers. Thank you. I am now only 42 subscribers away from naming my channel. And uh, I'm going to do it, uh, uh, you know, an easy name so that people can type in. So please uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And also don't forget to uh, like the like the, like the video to uh, what what subscribing and liking does for YouTube is it makes the channel more visible to people who haven't found it yet. And so uh, it isn't just uh, giving me a particular warm, fuzzy feeling. It's uh, actually helping people find the channel. YouTube does their math based on, well, how many subscribers and how many likes you have on that. So uh, let's see if we have another question coming in. Uh, we have one from Raina. Uh, she loves her new journal. She believes it'll help her with her Spanish learning, motivation, track, and her progress. And uh, Jude, she wants you to be on the lookout for uh, a class <laughs> booked with her soon. And, uh, uh, Raina has been, during this lockdown, Raina's been anything but locked down. She, her, her work has been overwhelming for her. She has more work now to do uh, than she did before. So uh, everybody keep Raina uh, in your thoughts uh, because she's, she is overwhelmed. Okay, so thank you if I'm missing any questions here. John, thank you very much um, for the compliment. Appreciate uh, your time too. And, and I really appreciate everybody's time. 
So does anybody else have any questions for Jude? We'll keep this open as long as you have questions for Jude. I shall. All right. Okay. So Jude, we thank you for your time. We want you to get a break. Uh, before uh, wait, 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 wait. There is a question. <laughs> Michelle, there is so much vocabulary you need to learn. How do you decide which word to write down to learn each day? From a structured list or just what occurs to you? Excellent question. Uh, I believe that everyone has a, uh, their own vocabulary, okay? Your, I always say this to my students, your vocabulary might be different from a doctor in English, like in your native language, okay? Uh, the doctor doesn't have the same vocabulary as the engineer or as the lawyer, okay? So if you're reading something or watching a video or a movie, and there's a word that you truly like, that you said, oh, I might say that. Okay, you can pick that word and put it in your vocabulary words for every day. Also, the lists are very good. If they are very, very common, like in the journal, that it's the most common words, you can use that too. But actually, it's your your style <laughs> if you're a very analytic style you analytical you're gonna like the structure of the list but if if you're more uh, physical you're going to prefer your own words that match with your lifestyle so it's it's all about your decision okay i will like or i will do it this way i will choose two from the list and one from another research that I found that I, that I truly like, or two that I like and one from the list, or if you split it in six, half and half will be good too. Yeah, <laughs> it, it depends on you. <laughs> yeah, and I absolutely agree. Desafortunadamente happens to be <laughs> one of my favorite long words. Desafortunadamente. <laughs> And so is the my lockdown word um you know when we're going to be unlocked i have no idea it's all uncertainty but desafortunadamente um, uh, also like fortunadamente um es buena. yeah see sí, buena uh, so Jude, let me ask you a question. Can we talk to you about just really quickly life in Colombia in the lockdown? Can you tell us a little bit what it's like sure. in, Colombia in the lockdown? Oh, it's, it's, uh... <laughs> oh, God. Well, the lockdown, it's been very hard. Uh, most for baby Luis, because he was used to go to the park every day and going to McDonald's with him or just to eat an ice cream. Things like that have changed too much because there are many restrictions. And one of the restrictions is that only one person can be in the street. So if we're going to take a baby Luis to the park, it's not possible because it will be three or just two. So it's not possible. Also, we have days for women and days for men. It's it's crazy, but yeah, I mean, the even number days, okay, like today, <laughs> is just for women. So women can go to the drugstore, to the supermarket, the bigger stores, the women are the ones allowed to go in the streets. The only men are allowed in these days are delivery guys that, that works in these apps. But um, on even or names, I think, uh, in Paris, we say it in Spanish, like tomorrow or yesterday are for men. <laughs> it's crazy, but that's their way to separate uh, the people more and yeah <laughs> to control a little bit more the situation also the fee or 
the thing the way you must to pay if you don't have a mask it's oh so much money so everybody needs their mask in the streets and gloves too and mm -hmm. uh, we like my family has been very 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 strict with that uh, Luis is the only one that goes to the street to buy oh. things I ordered a lot of things uh, also when when the things arrive or when Luis arrive we disinfect everything we wash everything with soap and water and also with a, a solution we made with alcohol uh, so yeah <laughs> But it's it's fine. We just trying to have patience, and my mom and dad they live with me uh, in Bogota. They yes. make yoga and watch movies, and same with baby Luis. We that's, play with him a lot. So yeah, I think that's wonderful. It's wonderful that they're there, and uh, we're so happy that you're there instead of Venezuela. But uh, we also know that. We're, we're conscious of the fact that you have family still in Venezuela and yes. uh, and that it's concerning to you guys about uh, how the conditions are there. But we're, we're happy that you're safe. And uh, it sounds like you guys uh, uh, are being extra careful, which is awesome. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see what, what Luis, since he's the only one that leaves the house, can you send us a picture of what he wears when it's women days only? <laughs> I I told him he has to wear one of my dresses and and paint his lips, but uh, his beard it's too big, so <laughs> police officers don't believe him. <laughs> you can always say he's from the mountains or something. I don't know. <laughs> sure, I see that Barb has a question. Okay. In the chat, um, uh, asked to describe your learning experience for today. What sort of things do you think should go in here? Uh, I've been listing my activities, but I think it may, it may not be the best thing to do. So your learning experience for today. Uh, yeah. My I my idea with that section, Barb, and everybody needs to make the book their own. But my idea was to. Uh, describe, you know, how how my day flowed from, uh, you know, planning to do such and such a thing with my Spanish with Paul lessons and ending up doing another thing and maybe where I got distracted with um, a particular grammar problem uh, or where I got distracted. Uh, it, to me, the idea was uh, did it come, easy? Did it come hard? Uh, that kind of thing. More of a diary entry, if you will, rather than to describe the activities. But it may be you an expansion on um, on the activity. But let me close that with saying, you need to make the book your own. What it, how it for you. Again, my idea was more of a, um, not the analytical entry of my activity, but more of a, hey, hey, knucklehead Dan, you know, today if you would have focused on such and such. Hey. You know, yeah, come on. Such and such. Well, come on, honey. I know. So, uh, so I hope that, I, I hope that helps you um, with that. I, I want to add something. Uh, there are many students that feel a little pressure about what to put in there and that what they need to grab in there, it has to be special or uh, specific. No, I mean, there are some days you should just say, I study in Spanish with Paul, for example, and I grow some sentences. If you see it, the Spanish with Paul will be also listening, reading, par, and studying, and even vocabulary if you need a new word. The speaking area, it's okay if you don't have an activity for that day if you didn't speak anything. But if you sing a song or if you repeat what they say, 
that can also be part of the speaking activities. I mean, you don't need to do anything, okay? Like the, the, you feel forced to do all of these things. No, it is just about what you did and put it in there. And if you want to put an activity for each, each section, it's your choice, you can do it and it will be great. <laughs> But it's it's all about you. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's, that's where it comes down to is, uh, you know, the the final. It's it's your book. So Sandy wants to mm -hmm. ask a question. Do you do group lessons, Jude? And, yeah, sure, Sandy. <laughs> and describe the size uh, of your group lessons as as they're set up right now. Uh, well, because I. Usually in the website, uh, to book a group class, it's just for Saturday and Sunday, but because of the situation with COVID, there are many people that want groups and I'm opening times in the week uh, for them. So I know Sandy and I had a group a lot of time ago with Karen and Isabella. So we can text them and see what days they want the group and and yeah and set it down <laughs> we can do it and for any other that want to participate in a group session uh, just text me in messenger or comment in in facebook or send me a message and i will uh, i'm going to do a lot of uh, groups this week uh, so we can we can schedule one. <laughs> That'd be great. And what are your rates for your group group classes? Okay, uh, there are two type of groups. Uh, there is a two person and me that costs seven dollars U.S. dollars, and a, a group of four people and me that costs five dollars U.S. dollars each. Okay, so both of those are per person. Yeah. T. Which which is an amazing bargain. I was um, talking to another uh, tutor this week, uh, not for classes, but just uh, uh, as a Facebook admin person. And uh, that tutor charges $18 an hour, um, which, uh, um, you know, is demasiado dinero para mí. So, uh, so this is a great opportunity to get together and, and um, if you need a larger group class, can they contact you by email and maybe arrange something? Sí, claro. Eh, las clases individuales, the individual ones, <laughs> eh, are $10, the okay. US dollars. Awesome. And to schedule them in all adjud in the book a class section, you can see my time and my availability. So yeah, it's easy. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, that's at olajud.com. And if you have any problems, I don't think you will. If you don't have an account, just register. Registering is free on olajude.com. Booking a class is one of the very first things that you'll see. But if you have any mm -hmm. issues with that, email Juder directly at yes. judervivas at gmail.com and she'll get <laughs> Luis to fix it for you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She will. Um, and, um, and the individual lessons, uh, I, you, won't, you won't regret it. So um looking over here on youtube to see if anybody else those are uh, we have a great number of folks that are hanging on participating on each side here we were up to beyond 40 attendees at one time so jude that is your largest group class so far yes <laughs> so uh, we appreciate it very much uh, people value your opinion and your time and you're on everybody's hearts and minds during these days no, oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, quédate en casa, por favor. Sí. Uh, 
Siempre. <laughs> Luis doesn't let me even to go to the door. He's like, no, I will do it. <laughs> now, I was thinking for baby Luis, what you guys could do is uh, you could build a slide like out of your uh, classroom window down to the patio below. <laughs> it's only three floors. Yeah, just three floors. It's okay. <laughs> Maybe a rope he can climb up to your window, um, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, you got. I. You have I guess he he like will love it. Patio, you know. <laughs> no, he the, his favorite game is uh, we what? have this spray for the with the alcohol solution, but we have other with water for the plants. So he starts to say agua, 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 agua. <laughs> And repeated agua like tons of times, and it's because he wants to grab this the, the spray and spray the plants and also himself and us. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a class uh, like that was on Wednesday days ago, and suddenly I start to feel like water, and it was Luis and baby Luis from the stairs is praying water to me and i was like ah don't do that and he just laughed and yeah the, those are his games we want to do also some in a paper with glue we make a figure and he puts like rice or any type of bean in there and kind of look into what is the or finding out what is the, the, the drawing or the figure. Well, think about the slide. And, uh, <laughs> uh, no. I, <laughs> I think I'll, I will be able to have some heart attacks looking at him <laughs> jumping everybody, everybody from the third floor. Video. Everybody loves your, loves your video. So uh, the problem with the video uh, the only problem that we had with the video was there was only one, okay? <laughs> no, we are we recorded one yesterday actually. All right, have uh, you so, it? No, we, uh, Luis is edited. Uh, okay. The problem with the video is that there's only one. <laughs> the next video it's gonna be about Venezuela. Okay. You're you're gonna love it. Uh, you're going to enjoy it too, and. With the videos, we also want that people tell tell us how are their cities and or their country. So you will see it. You will see it. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Okay, so if anyone has any additional questions for Jude, please email her at judervivas at gmail.com. Yeah. That's judervivas arroba at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Muy bien. Uh, de nada. <laughs> and, and thank you very much. I'm going to ask you guys shamelessly one more time to please subscribe to this page for me. Have your friends subscribe, even people who don't like Spanish, ask them to subscribe. It's free and it only takes a second. Uh, and um, um, and let's uh, let's get these subscriptions uh, on there so that I can rename this channel something that I can predict what the URL will be. All right. And uh, 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 thank you so much again, Jude, for your time. But I want to thank everybody who has attended. Um, there's too many of you to name. Everybody who asked a question, thank you very much. Um, and I'll see everybody. All of us will see each other inside our groups. And uh, please stay safe. And if you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of us. Okay? Yeah. All right. So, ciao. Ciao, amigos. Gracias. I'll start my music over for everybody. And I see what I have to do here. to close the annotation and stop the share. There we go. And now in the meeting for everybody. Goodbye. Ciao.